Hello and for person, this is Anton, and today we're going to be discussing the center of our galaxy, and specifically the black hole right in the middle, known as Sagittarius A star. Because the recent analysis that was just released by NASA and a scientist whose paper you can find in the description, suggests that they might have discovered the evidence for some kind of a jet that seems to have emanated from the center of the galaxy, from the black hole itself, with the jet itself resembling something like this, something that you see in this picture. But the jet itself doesn't seem to be active right now. As a matter of fact, whatever the scientists discovered seems to be slowly decreasing in luminosity and seems to be decreasing in power, or basically it's turning off. And that's actually the exciting part of the study. But all this of course relates to some of the previous discoveries, specifically the discoveries from various other telescopes, such as the Fermi telescope, that discovered these huge bubble-like formations and gamma rays that were very likely produced by these jets as well, but something like 3 to 4 million years ago. And more recently, the scientists have also identified smaller bubbles coming from the center, but this time only visible in the X-rays or in radio waves, with several other formations identified in a somewhat similar pattern as well. So essentially, it's as if two different jets protruded from the center of the galaxy and emitted a tremendous amount of energy approximately a million years ago. But none of this of course should come as a surprise, because we know that that's essentially what black holes do, and we know this by observing other black holes in other galaxies. And because somewhere right there in the middle where the stars are orbiting, there is a black hole that's about 4.1 to maybe 4.3 million masses of the sun, and because it does have quite a lot of matter falling into it once in a while, we sort of expect our black hole to become active once in a while as well. And because of this, scientists have been sort of looking for the signs of this activity in the past in order to establish if, for example, it has any effects on planet Earth or if it has any other effects on the formation of stars in the vicinity. Mostly because we know that from other galaxies, when black holes become way, way too active, they do have a tendency to actually extinguish star formation and potentially have other tremendously powerful effects on, for example, various planets. And interestingly enough, this emission right here that was detected by Fermi telescope was ridiculously powerful. It happened about 4 million years ago and it created these extremely large formations, thousands of light years in length, that are so powerful that they actually emit gamma rays. But on top of this, these formations have also affected some of the nearby gas relatively far away from our galaxy. They actually energize the formation that we sometimes refer to as the Magellanic Stream. It's a formation of gas in various stars that seems to stretch between the Magellanic Cloud galaxies. The video with more detail is somewhere right there, by the way. And interestingly enough, when these tremendously powerful bubbles were formed, their emissions ionized a lot of the gas in the Magellanic Stream at a distance of 200,000 light years away from us. And the activity from the gas is still even visible today. So what this implies is that these were ridiculously powerful events. So powerful that our galaxy probably resembled something like this, at least for a while with the jets probably emitting this energy for at least a few thousand years. But in this study, the scientists really wanted to sort of zoom in on the center of the galaxy and wanted to investigate some of the signs of the potential previous jets or possibly even discover signs of an actual jet still being there. Because at the moment, no jets are visible from the center of the galaxy, only the signs of previous emissions. And to do this, in their study, they essentially used a multi-wavelength approach. By using the various frequencies, they observed the center of the galaxy and used four different observations from four different telescopes to create a relatively accurate map of the center of the galaxy, showing some of the formations that were previously not actually known to us. And here they actually looked at a lot of different molecules that are present in a lot of this gas and a lot of these clouds, and here we're not just talking about hydrogen, we're also talking about more complex molecules such as methyl alcohols, carbon monosulfides, and a few other things which they then also combined with a supercomputer simulation trying to understand what could have happened in the center here to create these particular formations. And their best explanation right now is essentially summarized right here. A variety of different gas in this region right here and also right here was sort of pushed away by some sort of a jet that used to exist in this region which forms a somewhat narrow linear feature of molecular gas that's nearly 15 light years in length away from the central black hole. And at a slightly farther distance away from this, they've discovered an inflating bubble of hot gas most likely created when this jet illuminated all of this gas. 
and it seems to be directly aligned with the jet itself at a distance of about 35 light years away from the center, suggesting that the jet was hitting the gas, inflating it in the process. But all this currently is only showing us the residual effects, the leftovers. It doesn't show us the actual jet. It's essentially just evidence of a jet hitting all of this, but the jet itself is now absent. But by using further simulations in the supercomputer, they were able to establish the approximate shape of this formation. As you can see right here, the jet seems to bend along multiple streams as it moves away from the black hole. And so it sort of creates these unusual tendril-like formations which then affect all of this hydrogen gas, creating the formation that the scientists were observing. But obviously it doesn't end here. This then pushes more gas and creates even bigger bubbles. As a matter of fact, the scientists discovered these extending bubbles up to about 500 light years away from the center. And those are actually related to the previous discoveries made approximately a year ago. The video about this should be somewhere right there. And so based on these observations, the scientists concluded that in the last million years or so, it's not really known when, but definitely in the last million years, the black hole most likely increased its brightness by roughly around a million times, essentially turning it into an active galactic black hole, or active galactic nucleus as it's usually known. Which also means that it might have resembled something similar to this once again, and it seems to have done this at least twice in the last few millions of years. But we don't have to imagine what the galaxy looked like. As a matter of fact, in this study, the scientists identify an actual galaxy somewhere out there that seems to resemble Milky Way when it became somewhat active. It's a galaxy that you see right here in this image. A galaxy that was actually quite extensively studied before, and it was discovered to be what's known as a Seifert galaxy. It's known as M77 or Messier 77, and it seems to have almost identical structures right at its center, something similar to the Fermi bubbles, to the bubbles discovered by the X-ray telescopes and the infrared telescopes, but more importantly, it seems to also possess a relatively small jet. And so the central structure of this galaxy seems to be a really good opportunity for us to study what might have happened in the Milky Way approximately a million years ago, because it's actually happening there right now. And at a distance of 47 million light years away from us, this is one of the nearest such galaxies to us, and it can definitely show us what the Milky Way was going through back in the days. And so by studying Messier 77 and also learning more about Sagittarius A star, the black hole in the middle of our own galaxy, we can then maybe start identifying some of the effects all of this has on nearby stars, but I guess more importantly, figure out if this has any effect on planet Earth. Do these jets actually cause any effects on our planet? And have these jets affected our atmosphere or possibly even life on our planet in any way before? Considering the power of these jets, and considering the fact that they can last for up to about 50,000 years, and considering that they can actually sustain themselves for nearly 100,000 years or even longer, it would be extremely important for us to understand how these active galactic nuclei or these active black holes might influence planets like planet Earth, the planets with active atmosphere, active biosphere, and of course life. So this is probably one of the most important findings we can make here. If we find that sometime a million years ago there was a dramatic shift that was possibly caused by activation of the central black hole, well, in that case we might want to start worrying about things. But until then we probably shouldn't really worry much. And specifically because in this study the scientists have officially confirmed that the jet seems to be powering down. And it's probably going to be doing this for thousands of years. It's quite unlikely that anything is going to reactivate it anytime soon, so at least for the time being we should be totally fine. But in the meanwhile, someone should definitely consider studying Massey 77 in more detail to learn if there are any potential effects. And once someone does, I'll make sure to make a video about that as well. I guess until then, well, check out the study in the description below, subscribe if you still haven't, share this with someone who has learned about space and sciences, and maybe come back tomorrow to learn something else. Maybe support this channel on Patreon by joining the channel membership, or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.